If you want to know what's going on in Rockingham County government, check out Rockingham County 411. If you're interested in county governmental programs, projects, and services, don't miss Rockingham County 411. Public Information Officer Mabel Scott will share important, crucial news you can use with Rockingham County 411. Rockingham County 411, you're in a good place. I'm Mabel Scott, your Public Information Officer, and today we have people who know everything that you ever wanted to know about books, 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 videos, information, education at our Rockingham County Public Libraries. Joining us is Michael Roach, our director of all of our libraries, and then uh, Chase Lemons, who is our outreach <coughs> coordinator, and you see him with the bookmobile. So let's start off with you, Mr. Michael. Tell us what's going on in Rockingham County Public Libraries. Well, the big thing is we are fully open and we're waiting for you to come back to us. So we're all open, uh, all our programming is being done, mm -hmm. our computer classes are being done. Anything you want to do at the library, you can do it. As long as, yes. And it's not the library that some people may have remembered where you had to walk on your tippy toes and shh. This no, is interactive library. It's, it's interactive. We've got a lot of different things there. As a matter of fact, it's more likely to go shh to the staff <laughs> than, the, than the patrons. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and just to help some people who may be new to Rockingham County, how many libraries do we have? Well, we have four library buildings. Okay. One in Eden, one in Reedsville. One in Madison, Mayad, that serves Madison and Mayad, and mm -hmm. it's right on the border between the two towns. And the other is in Stoneville. Okay. But we have a fifth book, a, a library, which goes around the county, which is why Chase is here to discuss some of that issues. Okay. And uh, that's a pretty innovative thing. Uh, it's one of the more, I would say, almost the more, a more advanced library than... Uh, a lot of the bookmobiles going around. Oh yes, yes. Now tell us about these grants that you've received from the state library. Well we've received several grants COVID related over the last year mm -hmm. but the two big ones that we have right now is uh, an LSTA grant, project grant that we call Patron Self Service and the other one is an ADAPTS grant for COVID relief as well. Mm -hmm. The Patron Self Service is really going to make it easier for the, a person to go through the library without having to deal with staff. So you'll be able to go into the library, select whatever books you want, and then check them out yourself at some kiosks that we're getting and this year that will allow you to check out these books. And we're going to have the regular barcode that everybody's used to, you know, scanning and everything like that. But we're also going to be doing RFID radio frequency identification All right. so that the books here a book like this will have a RFID tag in it mm -hmm. and if they're all RFID tag books that you're going to have which is going to start out mostly just fiction mm -hmm. if you have a stack you put them on the kiosk it checks them all out at the same time I love it and it checks them in at the same you know mm -hmm. by the, the full stack there might still be some old things that you have to scan the, mm -hmm. the barcode on, mm -hmm. but you know that's that's all being taken care of. So the the patron self service that way, credit cards for payment, so you can pay your bills fees uh, mm -hmm. by by using the uh, credit card, coin and bill acceptors, which will allow you to you know. You make a copy, it's 25 cents a page. Mm -hmm. You put the quarter in there and get your print. Right. Instead of asking a staff member, here's a mm -hmm. dollar, you know, whatever. And of course, if you put in a dollar, it'll give you the change back. You know, so it'll be taken care of. Uh, print management. You can print from home to the library and then come into the library to pay for it and pick it up. You know, that way if you don't have a printer mm -hmm. or yours is out of ink, which is easy to do. Mm -hmm send it to the library and you can download it from the internet and print your document without staff actions. Mm -hmm. 
and then computer reservation. So we have computers in this in the library. Uh, instead of coming in to hopefully there you can find one, there'll actually be one there that you can actually online from home schedule if you needed one in the library or call you know gain access to that uh, mm -hmm. computer and then print. You know, it'll print to that cloud, and you can go and download your document and print it. Wow. Pretty nice. You're talking about customer-friendly. Yeah. Uh, and 78000 is being paid for by the state, and the county's putting in 26000 in for the project. So that's bringing in $78,000 worth of state and federal money into the county without any cost to the county or with very little cost to the county. Mm -hmm. The other grant we got was an ADAPTS grant. It was COVID related. Okay. And it had several instances in, you know, getting more access to people and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, we put in to get some things like glow forges and some things to make uh, logos for or design makerspace type things for patrons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And last Friday they called me up and said no. We're not going to let you do that. So I was thinking, ah, the grant's over, no big deal. We would still get some charging stations so you can charge your phone and computers mm -hmm. and things like that. But what they did is I've been a, a director for 10 years now, and uh, I'm well known to be a networking type person. And so we have 500 megabit links coming into the county and 200 going to the, the branches. And they said, well, what would you like to upgrade it? I went, sure. <laughs> of course. No cost to the county. The state has given me the funds to increase our bandwidth. Wow. You know, or the ability to increase our bandwidth. No cost to the county. You ever heard of Christmas in July? <laughs> Well, yes, I have. <laughs> uh -huh. That's exactly what this is. Well, but none of the none of none of the pre they're coming in boxes, but none of the presents are wrapped. Still free for the county. Oh, that's there wonderful. Go. There you go. Yes, that's a blessing. So I'm, you know, I'm really uh, that that was an amazing. Uh, You're right. Enhancement. I love that. An amazing enhancement. And it, it, and and uh, the new network equipment could not have been done without. The county management mm -hmm. and county IT, mm -hmm. and they reacted quickly. First off, the assistant county manager said, "Yes." The an IT. Can't you see Lance you smiling now? Yeah, I Derek. hope so. Uh -huh. I hope so. Of course. And then Derek, our right head of IT, looked at me and kind of like, "What are you doing?" And then he, I said, "Look, it's free money to the county, free network," and he says, "I'll get you the numbers." All right. Took him some time, but then mm -hmm. again, none of that is just snap your finger type of, mm -hmm. of information. So mm -hmm. he got it for us in time in the county, in the state. I told him on the 14th. On the 15th, they said yes. Yeah, I'm happy. That's the way you do it. Yes. So you're all open for full service to patrons yes. in all the libraries. Yep, no restrictions. If you still want a mask, uh -huh. we have masks. Mm -hmm. We can give you one. Okay. Uh, programming, programming for okay. all ages. Uh, right now, or, you know, August we'll start our children's programming again because mm -hmm. you know she was out on leave. Yeah. Uh, computer classes, different uh, computer, and I think you have that to post mm -hmm. to the. Uh, it's on the website now. Website now mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, computers, summer reading. Uh, Chase is going to talk a little bit about uh, some of that information as well, okay. what he's doing for summer reading. And then I see Ice House, eight life lessons from an unlikely entrepreneur. Yes. A couple of years ago, pre-COVID, uh, uh, a group called NC Ideas out of Raleigh, it's a foundation uh, working with uh, EBSCO, a magazine uh, database provider, provider. Um, they came up with this program about a book, Who Owns the Ice House? Um, guy, 
back in the 20s and 1920s, 1930s. I can't say 20s anymore because that's this century. <laughs> but the last century uh, had a nice house. Before all of us. Before all of us, mm -hmm. yes. Had a nice house. He's a black man, mm -hmm. entrepreneur down in, in Mississippi in the Delta, uh, cotton picking place. Mm -hmm. And he took a 14 year old under his, you know, that didn't want to pick cotton either, took him under his wing and taught him about how to be a businessman, how to, you know, persevere with it. And we've actually given the economic development, did give a workshop on this not too long ago uh, to help people in Rockingham County become entrepreneurs. And it's a statewide thing. We're trying it in several different locations, and Rockingham County happens to be one of the locations. And as Chase can tell you, the book is pretty interesting. Uh, just how to, how to get off the ground and be an entrepreneur. And it's not just about being an entrepreneur. I looked at it and I said, well, you know, reading some of this, I can make me a better employee in the, for county government or from uh, Purina or Walmart. Just understanding some of these life lessons aren't just about being your own businessman. It's about supporting your own business that you're in or you know, you're an employee of. I think you know a lot of people should read this type of book. Striving for excellence. Yeah. And the guy actually is now a millionaire living in uh, Omaha. Oh yes, I uh, need to read that. Oklahoma, rather than Oklahoma, somewhere. That's good. That's Tulsa, great. Oklahoma, I believe. Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he went from having nothing to having a lot, based upon his life lessons from his uncle. That's a great, great yeah. read. And now we're going to be talking with Chase Lemons. Tell us about outreach. Yes, ma'am. Uh, outreach, we try to serve as much as the county as possible. Our main focus is on areas of the county that don't have access to a <coughs> library branch. Okay. Um, some of these are broke down with homebound services, uh, what we call a drop-in library service. We also do uh, summer programming. So our bookmobile is our, uh, our pride and joy. We're, we're all over the place with the bookmobile. Last month, we had over 20 stops in the county. And uh, post-COVID, we're adding more. Slowly, slowly but surely, we're adding a lot more. So what is your homebound service, and how would someone apply to receive this service? Our homebound service is a service where we actually pick out the books according to your interests, and we can bring them to your location, whether that's your home or if it's easier to drop them off at a place of business or that the best place we can bring them to you for easy access. Um, a lot of times we have a sheet that our people can fill out, anybody that's interested in the program, and they can sign up for what they like. They can circle different areas, whether they prefer fiction or nonfiction or historical or romance. Or We have a good team back at the office that is accustomed to all the new releases as well as the old, and they can go and pick out books according to those interests. It doesn't have to be a long-term thing. Uh, earlier this year, we had a guy who was in his 30s, had a back surgery, and he utilized this service for six weeks or so just so they can get back on his feet. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be just books. Uh, some places we bring DVDs, audio books, uh, playaways, lots of different things. There are some restrictions about who can get homebound service, though, isn't there? Right. With homebound service, it needs to be somebody that can't physically get to the library branch themselves. I understand. So a lot of times we start off with a, with a first visit, and that's when we'll gauge their interest and their, uh, their ability to participate in the program. That's great. Yeah. So the services you provide are books and videos and audio tapes and yes ma'am a little bit of everything you all yeah. have music it all. cds yeah virtually full service yes the internet yes ma'am mm -hmm. now what does your drop-in library service entail our drop-in library is mainly broken into two parts uh the first part would be the, our children's drop-in library mm -hmm. so we'll drop off uh we have pre-packaged materials uh lesson plans we put together to make things easier on teachers or uh, daycare teachers and things like that. Um, we'll drop those off and they'll include books, puzzles, uh, plays that the children can participate in, things to help them learn. Um, 
And the other part of it would be our adult drop-in library, okay. which is mainly focused more around assisted living facilities across the county. For the senior citizens? For the senior citizens, mm -hmm. yes. I know they love to see you right. come up. Right, so we'll normally bring a lot of large print books to each assisted living facility, switch them out once a month, yeah. so they always have a fresh supply, as well as any uh, people in the assisted living facilities that want stuff more catered to their tastes, mm -hmm. we can bring them a small amount as well. So our drop-in library services all ages. I love it. Do you have any special programming during the summer months? Yeah, our biggest program during the summer is uh, what we call RIF. It's an acronym, Reading is Fundamental. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been taking place for years, and we've been fortunate enough to be able to keep it going. Um, we start typically around the end of May, beginning of June, and go until schools start back. We'll go to apartment complexes, summer camps, um, daycare centers, and we'll set up our bookmobile and let anybody under 18 come out and pick one book per person that's theirs to keep. No need to return, it's theirs to keep. Uh, just so far this year, we've gave out over a thousand books. We've been extremely fortunate. And during the summer, I can remember, in fact, that was the only place in our neighborhood where there was air conditioning. So, of course, your folks will say, yeah, just stay as long as you want yep. in the mm -hmm. library. Yep. Yeah. So you go and you read and you get hooked, and before you know it, you're reading books you never thought about reading. Yes, ma'am. And that's how you get the children attracted oh, yeah. to one, wanting to read. One thing to say about RIF, but reading, the Reading is Fundamental program, is several years ago, under Calvert Smith, who was a branch manager in Reedsville and was actually an early co uh, outreach coordinator mm -hmm. got a national award for our RIF program and we actually went up and I'm not saying I don't know if it was the Senate or the House of Representatives but that they gave her the award through reading is fundamental and so you know senators and representatives were actually there while she was well she as a representative of Rockingham mm -hmm. County in that program was one of other people got the award too, but I thought that was pretty nice that Rockingham County was, oh, yes. you know, in that. Yeah. And he's carrying on, yeah, doing a, a good job. Very proud of. Yeah. Good, very good. Proud of. And, and I have just been amazed with all the things you're doing with the summer reading program, the activity packets, YouTube videos, the reading log, the preschool story time. Yeah. Oh well, my God, that's fun. We have a youth services that person that is amazing she does a wonderful job uh, she's out right now and starting again in August she'll be back to doing her you know videos and things like that YouTube mm -hmm. programming and everything yeah. and and then other things that I never thought the library knitting sewing crocheting uh, bingo for books and of course the genealogy over at Madison Mayadan, the Andy Griffin uh, Rerun Watchers Club, and I keep seeing the word snacks and crafts, and wow. Don't forget. This is the new library. And don't forget 3D printing. Of course. And thank you for all that the library did. I think it was the Eden Library to help when yeah. uh, Corona first hit. Yeah. With those special masks? Yeah, they did 650 uh, masks for people. Mm -hmm. Face shields. Face um, shields. Everything mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah. And, and I'm sure the people in the Department of Social Services and the Health Department and EMS were very, very grateful. Yep, and even doctor's offices and other places like that uh, got a, no charge. Didn't even cost the county that much because it's staff time, but the Eaton Friends purchased all of the materials. So, you know, the Eaton Friends, we could not be here without our friends. Let's say a big shout out to all of the friends of the library. Yeah. And uh, the Western is Eaton, uh, Reeds, uh, we have one in Eaton, we have one in Reedsville, and our Western friends is Madison, Mayadan, and mm -hmm. Stoneville. Mm -hmm. They are worth their weight in gold. Yes. So, anything else you'd like to share? It's your turn. This is, the biggest thing I want people to understand is I'm their library di director. 
I work for Rockingham County. The county manager is my boss, an assistant county manager. They're my boss. I work through the, for the people, through the county commissioners. But I work for the people of Rockingham County. They pay our taxes. They buy our books. It's 99.99% free. There's a little fees in there. Um, but it's your library. Come on back. You can check out a book for free. We just ask that you bring it back. So, it's your library. Use it. Well said. Chase? We're just very fortunate things are getting back to rolling, especially with the bookmobile. Rolling, uh, rolling, rolling yep. with that beautiful bookmobile. We're adding stops High everywhere. Tech. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, I love it. Yeah. It has uh, Wi-Fi in it. Mm -hmm. so as long as we're in an area that's got cell phone service from uh, Verizon, we have, you can drive up and park, and actually during COVID, he would park in Walmart parking lots and other parking lots, and people could just drive up and uh, have access, wireless access. Mm -hmm. Kids could do their homework. Mm -hmm. And in, in our branches, we still have expanded Wi-Fi into our uh, parking lots and things like that. All right. We want to thank you, Michael Roach and Chase Lemons, for joining us here on Rockingham County 411, and we hope more and more people stop by and enjoy your Rockingham County Public Libraries or look for the bookmobile. This well, is all part of Rockingham County. One thing I'd like to say is you, you mentioned me, but I'm not it. You know, I am it's not. It's all the branch it's, managers it's, it's and the, the staff. It's my staff. And, yes. Without my staff, the libraries wouldn't exist. I have excellent staff and they're all dedicated on helping you. So you got some genealogy questions, reference questions, you just want help picking out a good book to read, our branch staff are willing to help you. He's branch staff as well. So, you know, his staff just got wheels on it. All you got to do right. is stop by, mm -hmm. give them a call. Yeah. Rockingham County, you're in a good place.